In the University of Nueva Cáceres, we build a better tomorrow for our students. With our future-ready facilities, progressive teaching methods, a nurturing culture for success, our learn-as-you-earn programs make it easier for working students to finish college. We ensure their bright careers. It all starts here, in the heart of Bicol. The University of Nueva Cáceres by Ayala's AC Education. Nurturing better tomorrows for all. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Faye Natividad, isang proud UNC ambassador. Sa ngalan po ng buong pamilya ng University of Nueva Cáceres, welcome po sa pilot episode ng first ever Academy Initiated Webinar Series in Bicolandia. Samahan niyo po kami ngayon sa webinar series episode 1 na Tina Magatang, Tapang, Talino at Tulong. The learning continues at UNC. Sa episode pong ito, tatalakayin ng ilan sa ating mga educators ang mga usapin na may kinalaman sa edukasyon ngayong new normal. Kabilang dyan ang Kaya ng Pinoy, Winning the COVID-19 Fight Through Education. Pula ang ating kulay, UNC's Learning Continuity Program. Piliin mo, Flexi Learning Choices for Every Learner in Basic and Higher Education. At karamay mo kami, Financial Assistance at UNC. Bago po magtapos ang episode na ito, magbibigay daan tayo sa inyong mga katanungan at paglilinaw. Ang webinar series pong ito ay isang paraan ng serbisyong pagdamay at pag-alalay para sa mga mag-aaral at magulang na bahagi ng University of Nueva Cáceres. UNCNs, ito po ang inyong webinar series, Episode 1. Tapang, Talino at Tulong. The learning continues at UNC. Simulan na po natin. Hi, I am Kian Hamer, a proud ambassador of the University of Nueva Cáceres. As a nation, we do our best to overcome the challenges that come along our way. We try to be resilient, we endeavor to be strong, but the question is, will we make it through this time? Our first topic will revolve around answering that question, and it is entitled, Kaya ng Pinoy, Winning the COVID-19 Fight Through Education. The speaker for this first talk is the Vice President for Academic Affairs of the National Teachers College. He is a known expert on e-learning literacy, teacher education, social linguistics, student affairs program development, and curriculum development. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Edison Fermin. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me here this afternoon. I would like to congratulate the leadership of the University of Nueva Cáceres through its president, Dr. Faye Patria Lauraya, for this very noteworthy endeavor of reaching out to their parents, students, and other community members who continue to make the University of Nueva Cáceres the best private school in the Bicol region. This afternoon, I'd like to join all of you and strengthen our resolve that indeed, Kaya ng Pinoy, we can win the COVID-19 fight through the continuity of education. The truth of the matter is that the world will never be the same again, largely due to the fact that the pandemic has allowed all of us to rewire human experience and all forms of human interaction. We can expect that even the world of education, where a lot of socialization takes place, will never be the same again. And there are a lot of shared concerns at the moment. From the economic vantage point, many Filipinos, particularly parents, are now concerned kung may trabaho pa kaya sila bukas o sa ilan pang darating na mga buwan. This will truly hit us hard. And in fact, in a little while, I will emphasize why this is so. It also poses a lot of psychological concerns. 
especially when every family member becomes so worried about the psychological impact of these realities. Not understanding the near future, given all these realities, affords us the opportunity to doubt our capacity to engage in a lot of social experiences, including education. And there are also social concerns. Because of the rapid and robust environment for restlessness, we are anticipating that there might be form of social conflict that may arise from a lot of the possibilities that this pandemic has brought upon us. And true enough, if we study the general trends in terms of the growth of various sectors of the economy right now, every single industry is technically at its lowest. From advertising all the way to travel, we are experiencing a lot of growth decline. Only that in certain sectors, we still see some form of growth, but still this is the lowest in years and largely because there are major industry disruptions happening. And the one that is a hardest hit at the moment is the accommodation and food services, or technically the tourism sector. This will actually impact on a lot of other industries, including retail trade, repair, manufacturing, real estate, and so on and so forth. I'd like to emphasize in this World Tourism Organization chart that in all of these industry disruptions, women are likely to become most affected by all these uh, disruptions. And largely because of this, we are anticipating the highest record of unemployment to happen across nation states, particularly in the Philippines. Since about uh, three weeks ago, we have already recorded the highest record of unemployment. With businesses continuously closing, there's a lot of possibility that a great number of Filipinos will be affected in terms of employability. And this would mean or translate to the fact that there will be an intensified inability to access basic needs. And we say that when our basic needs are not met, there is likelihood that a lot of forms of social unrest will happen. This will also place a lot of our citizens in states of displacement. Elsewhere in the world, those that are heavily affected by the virus or the pandemic in general are currently looking for safer places to stay only to find out that they will likely be the carriers of the disease as well. And because of this, a lot of places where there was normal forms of, or there were normal forms of uh, interaction are now on lockdown mode. And one of these areas is the education sector. Truth be told, we are now talking about 1.52 billion learners out of school and related educational institutions. This also translates to about 78.3 million teachers and educators affected by school closures. But take note that because we have a special responsibility to ensure continuity, inclusion, and equity for all students, we cannot afford to just discontinue all forms of learning because in the Philippines, as monitored by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, we're talking about 28.4 million Filipino learners that will be affected by this or are currently affected, and we fear that there will be the widening of learning inequalities and hurting of the vulnerable children and youth. And take note, the impact is going to be disproportionate. And given that our education system is not entirely ready to face adverse conditions such as this pandemic, we need to brace for more impact. Besides, the international solidarity for the creation of the COVID-19 vaccine has declared this is not the last outbreak that we will see. So there is large, a large degree of probability that this may happen again, and we just need to become more ready to face the challenges of these conditions. This is the reason the I People's Schools, consisting of Mapua University, Malayan Colleges of Laguna and Davao, the Malayan High School of Science, the University of Nueva Cáceres, the National Teachers College, 
and the APEC schools have come together through the leadership of the Yuchenko and the Ayala groups of companies to support the Commission on Higher Education by providing expert advice to Chairperson J. Prospero de Vera III in his pursuit of the continuity of learning. Because we quote uh, Chairperson de Vera, quarantine or not, learning must continue and therefore it is everybody's responsibility to ensure that flexible learning is delivered during and after this crisis. Yours truly is a member of the Technical Working Group on Flexible Learning of the Commission on Higher Education. And with the inputs of President Lauraya of UNC and a President Vea of Mapua University and Malayan Colleges, we are coming together to strengthen the resolve of Filipino educators in ensuring that we can deliver education very efficiently and effectively because we believe that learning must continue. We need to support the ability of our economy to recover from all this because when schools are totally closed down, we are unable to contribute to economic development. And in fact, the Asian Development Bank has already declared, if we continue to close down schools, our total losses in terms of school operations will be closer to 900 billion pesos. And this would mean that we will be unable to provide continuous service to 24.4 million learners who will be drastically affected by this in the years to come. To the parents on this call and those who are listening to us, please take note that every additional year of schooling can be equivalent to 10% of additional future earnings of students. So if you stop them from schooling from one year, you reduce their capability of earning better. In addition, if we study the patterns of children who stopped schooling during the Second World War, we will all find out that 40 years later, these students were still negatively impacted upon. Their, social, their psychosocial sense of wellness, their, inability, their ability to become productive economically were all affected by their discontin discontinuity of education. And because we are anticipating that a lot of industries and employment sectors will demand new skills after COVID-19, all the more that we should be convinced that we must continue learning. For example, eight major areas are now being seen as the most important resources for upskilling, reskilling, and cross-skilling our workforce. These include data sciences, machine learning, big data, artificial intelligence, digital transformation, digital productivity, IT security, and design thinking. And all these eight courses are within the consciousness of our institutions, especially the University of Nueva Cáceres, with its wonderful engineering and IT programs in place. What we believe in is that if we continue education this year, we can slowly introduce the new skills that will be needed by the workforce after COVID-19. In addition, other reasons include for the continuity of learning is that our schools remain a vital source for meeting students' basic needs, especially food and healthcare. Now, please take note that if schooling stops, access to these basic needs will definitely also stop. And we cannot afford this to happen because our students play a huge role in stabilizing our economy post-COVID-19. On the part of our students, if we discontinue education, we will also discontinue the monitoring and assessment of their achievement. And take note, the loss of assessment information delays the recognition of both high potential and learning difficulties and can have harmful long-term consequences for the child. In other words, as long as the assessment of the learning of our children is continued, we are guaranteed to provide more guidance to parents, guardians, and of course the learners on how they can do better so that they can prepare themselves better for the world of work. But what is the most alarming reason why we need to continue learning? Did you know that our young children, the youth, 
are ones are the ones who are so vulnerable to a lot of mental health issues if we take them out of learning processes because by learning or through learning we provide students with some form of routine to keep themselves safe and productive by losing this sense of normalcy they are likely not going to be productive in the later years so where are we currently right now as a nation right now we are all asking ourselves the question we are all convinced the learning must continue but how do we do it we are all in this together and currently with the leadership of the university of Navacáceres, along with its sister schools in the i people group we are very sure we just need to know the best modality and over the last two months this group of schools has been rigorously studying modalities of flexible learning now please take note students and parents that flexible learning can happen in residential modalities that means to say there's still some face-to-face -face provision and a little of remote provision but take note given the parameters of quarantine issued by the government face-to-face -face learning is definitely going to be a challenge for the time being that is why we went extreme to considering open and distance learning where there is rare to non face-to-face -face provisions and more of remote or distance provision but because we are anticipating a variety of needs and concerns we are also preparing for blended learning where there's likelihood that there's going to be limited face-to-face -face if and when the government lifts the quarantine in some places in the country and at the same time offer some remote provisions for the safety of everyone all of our schools are currently making learning truly flexible by rationalizing learning outcomes that are necessary to ensure that our students become employable and at the same time ready for other initiatives such as college and further education but we need to assure all students that that we will not frustrate you with one instead let you explore and have fun with only an inch long or short content but a mile deep set of learning experiences where the home is primarily the laboratory for learning now take note we have studied very carefully all available modalities for those with internet connectivity and our faculty members are being prepared for this but equally we are focusing on people who have issues with connectivity. In fact, the entire the Philippines is actually having a lot of issues in terms of connectivity because our connectivity structures are not yet that ready. According to reports being raised by international organizations looking at the readiness of our country. But be it as it may, there are a lot of available modalities in place. And two and three of them are the, fam the three famous non-wired or non-internet based options are modular learning correspondence learning or the mailed versions of the module and project-based learning at homes the rest may also be explored but in the meantime the two or the three very uh, accessible non-wired options are the ones that i have just mentioned the long and short of it the country is moving towards making education para sa lahat really work Sa gitna po ng pandemyang ito, walang sino man nakasangkot sa pagpapatuloy ng edukasyon at ng pag-aaral ang dapat na magkaroon ng mga anyo ng disbentahe o kaya ng di pagkakapantay-pantay. Kung kaya nga, naniniwala kami na kung kayo man ay may problema sa internet o kung kayo man ay pinagpalang magkaroon ng access sa internet, tuloy ang pag-aaral dahilan sa mayroong paraan upang gamitin ang iba't ibang modalities of learning. Our government has also underscored that we must continue learning because each year of education reduces the risk of conflict by around 20%. If all people are really glued to the continuity of education, we are more at peace and we gain a lot of security in terms of how our learners are doing. Take note, there's already report of domestic abuse and depreciation of human capital during times of adversity. In fact, there's also news coming up that 
a lot of teenage pregnancy cases might surface if we discontinue education. I think as a nation, we just need to understand very well the needs of our COVID-19 BFFs, our students. They are bored, they are fidgety, and they are frustrated. And so, as adults learning with them, we become, we must become their besties. We need to break the monotony of their experience right now by engaging them differently, suggesting new ways of learning. And by doing this, our teachers would need to think alternatively, inspire creativity, and ensure the wellness of every learner. But in the meantime, behind the story of every student who undergoes a lot of adversity and struggle would be parents who are partners advocating relevant education, nurturance, teaching, and schooling. We need you, our parents and guardians, at nananawagan po ako na makiisa tayo sa pagpapatuloy ng pag-aaral na ating pinapahalagahan bilang isang bansa. The Philippine people have always been known for their resilience. This resilience we have seen as something that we continuously demonstrate at the height of any form of adversity, be it a drop, a typhoon, or even a volcanic eruption, especially in the case of the Bicolanos. But if we continue to look at the value of the continuity of education, we will win this fight by igniting FIRE, which stands for our increased faith in the education system, our sense of interdependence and resilience as a people, and most importantly, our sense of empathy and pakikiramay. That is the reason we believe that UNC is very much ready to pursue the continuity of learning that will become an antidote to COVID-19 by pursuing tapang, talino, at tulong. And may I say, padagos ang harang, tuloy ang laban para sa bawat bikulanong nagahangad ng makabuluhan at mapagpalayang edukasyon. Thank you everyone and good afternoon. In the University of Nueva Cáceres, we build a better tomorrow for our students. With our future-ready facilities, progressive teaching methods, a nurturing culture for success, our Learn As You Earn programs make it easier for working students to finish college. We ensure their bright careers. It all starts here, in the heart of Bicol. The University of Nueva Cáceres by Ayala's AC Education. Nurturing better tomorrows for all. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Christelle A. Sales, and I am a proud UNC ambassador. Welcome back to the pilot episode of the UNC webinar series. Thank you, Dr. Edison Fermin, for that very enlightening talk. Truly, education should be for all. The new normal seems difficult because of all the uncertainties and challenges laid down ahead of us. But we did not come this far to only come this far. So the question is, how will UNC help us make all these a little less difficult? Our next topic will revolve around answering that question. And it is entitled, Pula ang ating kulay, UNC's Learning Continuity Program. The speaker for this talk was the seventh president of Bicol University. She led the university to greater heights by bringing the university closer to the community. BU is the first state university in Bicol, and today she leads as the fourth university president of UNC, the first university in Southern Luzon, and the largest private university in Bicol. Her role is to steward the university to become a leading future-ready and outcome-based higher education institution in the region and achieve autonomous status by 2025. Her governance framework is focused on attaining excellence in four fronts. Academic excellence, operational excellence, fiscal stability, and institutional sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Faye Lea Patria M. Lauraya. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, UNCNs. Good afternoon to our beloved parents, guardians, and the participants to this webinar. I also would like to thank Dr. Ed Fermin from the National Teachers College, our sister school, for providing the broader context on our fight against COVID and the need 
for continuity of learning. This afternoon, my role and my part in this segment is to talk about UNC's continuity learning plan. Pula ang kulay natin. Pula ang kulay namin sa UNC. And we chose red to power our fight against COVID. Red is always associated with happy events in our lives. It is the color of Christmas. It is the color of New Year. It is also the color when we celebrate birthdays and my grandchild just celebrated her fifth birthday. It is also the color of love. It is the color of Valentine's Day. So UNC is red. Red being associated with happy days and with love. UNC is located in the heart of Naga City. UNC is a happy place. It's a happy place for me and it can be a happy place for you. Red is also associated with bravery and the red heart. And we chose it as the power of UNC's learning continuity plan. What does red stand for? Red is about resilient education delivery plan. Resilient, we chose this value because it connotes the innate strength of us Bicolanos. Resiliency, flexibility, Adaptability, these are the new values that we require in these difficult times of COVID. And therefore, we chose this color, red, resilient education delivery, to power UNC's fight against COVID. But before that, let me share with you UNC's beautiful story. UNC was born in 1948 as the Nueva Cáceres College. It became a university in 1954, making UNC as the first university in Bicol. Today, we have 72 years of experience in providing quality education to Bicolanos and beyond. These 72 years of excellence in higher education has been made possible because of your trust in UNC. And in fact, we organized this webinar in order for you to be informed of the many, many changes that need to be done, especially in the delivery of education and the many new nomenclatures about delivery and learning. So that with this information, you can make the right choice. And with this information, you can continue to trust UNC. Our colors, red and gray, is all about the complete fulfillment of life. For life, indeed, is not just about happiness, nor is life about a bed of roses. The complete fulfilling life is a combination of joy and pain of giving, of receiving, of triumphs and losses, of joy, as I said, of joy and pain. That's the red and gray combination of UNC. But most of all, the red and gray means that in UNC's mission, we put premium on giving chances for every person to overcome difficulties in life primarily through education. Our hymn in UNC is also about educating our youth, education serving as light in their life. And it is also dedicated to the Bicolano youth, calling on them to be upright and brave. The UNC motto of non scule sed vite, not of school, but of life, is also about our educational philosophy that education and knowledge should not be an end, 
but simply as means towards discovery about discovering our meaning, our purpose in life, not of school, but of life, using our knowledge gained through education to become better persons and better versions of ourselves. This mission of delivering quality and affordable education has been continued from day one of the birth of UNC with our first president, our founding father, Lolo Brown, or Don Jaime Hernandez, up to the present leadership. The continuity of our mission of ensuring that you make it, ensuring that everybody makes it. We are a comprehensive university, and therefore in University of Nueva Cáceres, we have wide choices from kindergarten to senior high school. These are our baccalaureate programs, and Ed Fermin indeed has said that our strongest program are in engineering, education, computer studies, business, nursing, education, as well as criminal justice education. We have the School of Law and also the School of Graduate Studies. What is important here in this slide is that all of these programs, about 44% of them had been certified, qualified, and accredited. We are, our mission is to be able to ensure that you make it by completing your studies in time, you are prepared to take your licensure examinations as well as ready to launch your compelling careers. Employability is our one main thing. And despite the difficulty of finding jobs amidst the COVID, COVID economic displacement, our placement office under the leadership of the Joanne has always been conducting and in search of new employment opportunities and had been conducting webinars for career placement of our graduates. That's UNC's promise to everybody that comes to our university. Ed Fermin had already tackled up that there are so many concerns as we fight COVID. Our students would ask, how do we continue schooling? Our parents would ask, are our children safe if we continue and allow them to go to school? There is fear, there is insecurity, and this is the reason why we boldly come here in this webinar to explain what are the changes in the delivery in UNC, which we call our Red Learning Solutions. When we open our classes on August 17 for college and August 24 for basic education, we will make sure that we are true to our promise of a twin commitment, not just one, but two commitments to make sure that our students, faculty, and personnel are safe and that our students shall continue learning and acquiring learning with quality and affordable education so that they will be able to graduate in time and learn with their batchmate in time. My dear participants in this webinar, the expert says that to fight against COVID, our best weapon is to stay home. And so most of the ads pertaining to the fight against COVID repeatedly say is stay home. That is the safest place for you. However, there are also essential purposes why we also need to go out. And in that eventuality, please wear masks, keep physical distance away from each other, and constantly wash our hands. These are the necessary protocols for us to observe and survive this COVID. And so how are we going to do it in UNC? As we said, 
We would like you to be safe and we would like you to continue your learning. So when we open on August 24, we will make sure that you shall continue learning from the safety of your homes. And so we are providing you what we call flexible solutions and inclusive to all types of learners. Part of this webinar is the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Nora Manikas of UNC, who will tell you about the details of these flexible learning solutions. But suffice it to say that these are two solutions addressing the, the different context of our learners. FlexiTech is about stability and virtual classrooms, and FlexiKit if you don't have connectivity or no internet connection at all. So FlexiTech and FlexiKit can easily be converted into blended learning once government allows us to come physically to school. So those are words already that we should remember. Flexible learning solution in UNC comes in two forms, FlexiKit and FlexiTech. All of this can be learned from the safety of your homes. However, once government allows physical presence in the classroom and based on the survey conducted by UNC, some of our students likewise prefer to come and experience face-to-face -face learning in the beautiful campus of UNC. Once it is safe for you to come, we will switch this FlexiTech and FlexiKit into blended learning. So that's again a new term, blended learning. What does blended learning mean? Blended learning is simply combining the different modalities that are being offered you, like FlexiKit being combined with your limited presence in the campus, or your FlexiTech combined again with minimal presence in the classroom. Presently, the University of Nueva Cáceres, together with our sister schools, Mapua and the National Teachers College, are exploring the possibility of adapting the Israeli model for continuity of learning. This is a routine of 14 days where you are you will only spend four days in, in school and 10 days at home and routinary observe those four and 10 combination. So as soon as we finalize this blended learning and as soon as the government allows physical distancing being observed, your presence in the classroom, we will call on you again and conduct another webinar and information dissemination to explain this new modality. But for now, I'd like to say, be safe, and we will be able to continue learning from the safety of your home through FlexiTech, which is online or virtual classroom, and FlexiKit, which is the modular learning modality. Once physical presence is already allowed in the campus, we will make sure that the University of Nueva Cáceres will be compliant with the standards that are prescribed by the World Health Organization, our very own Department of Health, and the Department of Labor. The UNC administration, headed by Sir Chito Palmiano, is assuring all of us that there will be regular disinfection and particularly places that are frequently visited by our students will be disinfected not once, but twice daily. We shall also observe protocols upon entry and exit to the campus, ensuring that you are COVID free and that when you get out, you are also going to be monitored to ensure that you have no fever or cough at all. Those marks on the floor that you see on the screen 
is about the physical distancing measures in the university. We should not be close to each other and observe the minimum spaces as prescribed by this health standard. So, kahit yung ating mga BFF, hindi na pwedeng appear-appear, but we can just do new modalities to greet hi and hello to everyone. And most of all, there will be hand sanitizing stations that will be located all over, strategically located in the university. So, what are you waiting for? UNC had made sure that all of these preparations, FlexiKit, FlexiTech, and the eventuality of a blended learning will, continue, will continuously be at an affordable cost. There will be no tuition fee increase this year. And in fact, we have reduced the miscellaneous fees for our students. So enrollment is now ongoing. And you see on your screen the different names and telephone numbers of our enrollment counselors to make sure that you will be guided to go about the online enrollment system, especially if you're not comfortable with the technology. Call them so that they will be able to assist you in a seamless experience of our online enrollment. It is said that through the years when you grow old, you would never even remember what you had been taught in school. But surely, you will remember the caring teachers, the love and nurturance that UNC will give you. UNC is all about heart. UNC is about red. Red is our color. Red is our weapon against, UNC, against COVID. Red is also about love and the nurturing education at UNC. Pula ang kulay natin. Pula ang kulay ninyo. Thank you very much and a pleasant afternoon. In the University of Nueva Cáceres, we build a better tomorrow for our students. With our future-ready facilities, progressive teaching methods, a nurturing culture for success, our learn-as-you-earn programs make it easier for working students to finish college. We ensure their bright careers. It all starts here, in the heart of Bicol. The University of Nueva Cáceres by Ayala's AC Education. Nurturing better tomorrows for all. Thank you so much, President Fay, the Chief Architect of our inspiration. UNCNs, we are awaiting a school year that holds so much promise. Ayon po sa isang veteranong basketball coach, flexibility is the key to stability. Ayon nga po sa akin sariling pananalita, at UNC, you will experience studying that suits your situation. Ang ating pangatlong pag-uusapan po ay tungkol dyan. Piliin mo, flexi learning choices for every learner in higher education. Para magbigay liwanag sa usaping yan, pakinggan po natin ang isa sa mga haligi ng UNC brand of education. Ang ating minamahal na Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Nora Elizabeth F. Maniquez. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon, dear parents, students, community. Una sa lahat, nais ko po kayong pasalamatan sa pagpapaunlak ninyo sa aming imbitasyon sa webinar na ito upang manood at pakinggan kung ano ang inihanda ng UNC para sa ating mga estudyante at sa mga papasok pang mga bagong estudyante sa pagpapatuloy ng aming serbisyo sa larangan ng edukasyon. So let me now share my screen. Sa hapon pong ito, I will be presenting to you the UNC Red Flexi Learning. Red pertains to resilient education delivery as explained by our Madam President. And when I looked up the meaning of the word resilient in the dictionary, it says able to become strong or successful again after something bad 
happens. Ang UNC Red Flexi Learning ay ang ating solusyon upang maipagpatuloy natin ang serbisyo ng edukasyon sa ating mga mag-aaral na sa kabila ng pandemya na ating nararanasan, kailangan nating magpatuloy. Dito po sa slide na ito, ay makikita natin ang monument ni Lolo Brown. Yan po ang tawag ng mga mag-aaral ng UNC sa monumento na iyan. Siguro dahil sa ang kulay nito ay brown. But more than the color, the monument brings us back to the history of the founding of UNC. Dr. Jaime Hernandez established UNC in 1948 because of his vision for the Bicolano. Gusto niyang makita ang ating mahal na Bicolantia na maging isang maunlad o progresibong komunidad sa pamamagitan ng pagbigay ng sapat na kaalaman at talino through an affordable and quality education. Over the years, nagawa naman po yan ng UNC. Salamat Lolo Brown sa iniwan ninyong magandang legacy o pamana. Hindi lamang sa Bicolantia kung hindi sa buong mundo, at lalong-lalo na sa, sa ating bansa. Ngunit, nung mga nakaraang uh, panahon, nakaraang buwan, nagkaroon tayo ng COVID-19. Suddenly, parang nawalan tayo lahat ng direksyon. Paano na ang pag-aaral? At paano na ang pagtuturo at ang pagpapatuloy ng misyon at adhikain na iniatang sa ating mga kamay ni Lolo Brown, ni Dr. Heimer Hernandez? Huwag po kayong mag-alala. Tatalunin po natin ang COVID-19 dahil hindi mahihinto ang pagbigay ng edukasyon at ang pagbigay ng kaalaman at talino sa ating mga kabataang Bicolano. Okay, so let me now describe UNC's flexible learning solutions as we adapt to the new normal. The UNC Red 3.0 flexible learning solutions is centered on the continuity of learning of our students through flexible learning delivery following the CHED, DepEd, and LEB or Legal Education Board advisories and policies. And based on those advisories and policies, we have set these two modalities as our flexible learning solutions for the coming school year. The first is what we call as the FlexiKit, which is a modular solution that we are offering our students particularly to students who have zero connectivity at home. Ibig sabihin, mahina po ang internet connectivity dun sa lugar na kinabibilangan nila sa kanilang mga bahay. At uh, kaya hindi sila makakapag-access sa internet. So, huwag silang mag-alala sapagkat meron tayo nung tinatawag na red, uh, flexible kit or flexi kit. At this will come in two forms. The first is what we call as the printed form, which will be expressed in terms of the red learning kit. And the second is in digital form, which is also the same as the lessons that are in the red learning kit, except that they are in the tablet. And the second modality is what we call as the flexi tech or the tech driven, wherein we are going to use a learning management system as our mode of delivery of the teaching learning process to our students. How can the students get the red learning kits? And red learning kits po will be made available to them at the beginning of the first day of classes. The complete set of red learning kits will be picked up by the students at the dean's offices or delivered to them via courier or strategic pickup centers. Kaya po, upon enrollment, it is all, already necessary for the deans as well as the principals and also the faculty members to be able to determine what is the capability of the student in terms of the internet connectivity at their homes or at their places. So if they say that 
internet connectivity is zero at home, there is no means for them to connect through the internet, then they will be given the red learning kits. If they live in Naga City, then they can get these red learning kits at the University of Nueva Cáceres through the offices of the deans, also of the uh, program heads for college students. And then for the basic education students, they will get the tablets through the offices of their principals. But if they live outside of Naga City, for their safety, we shall deliver the red learning kits to their places via courier or strategic pickup centers. How will the students make use of the red learning kits? So, meron po kami tinatawag na course guides or module sa loob ng red learning kits na yan. The modules are designed for self-study even without the teacher's constant presence. Kasi po, yung modules will already give them all of the lessons that they need to study during the semester in the case of the college students and during the whole school year in the case of the basic education students. And the module will already serve as the teacher. It will be available for them as if the teacher is already speaking to them through the materials that they are reading or through the tablets that they are using. But in spite of this, there will also be a schedule for them to consult with their teachers because the consultation time will be provided to them by, by their teachers uh, through the means such as phone calls or text, text messaging or through the FB Messenger. Will there be exams in the FlexiKit modality? Yes po, kinakailangan po na ma-assess natin ang performance ng ating mga students through examinations. So, for college students, we will have two major exams. We will have the midterm as well as the final examinations. If the face-to-face -face scenario will already be possible, and if we will already be allowed by the IATF and by our government, if circumstances will allow, we will have the examinations in the university. But of course, we will observe the proper protocol such as social distancing and uh, all the sanitary procedures that we need to implement. But if it will not yet still be possible, then our professors will provide alternative assessment requirements to fulfill the learning outcome evidences for the subject. Sa FlexiTech naman po, what platform are we going to use? So as I mentioned a while ago, we're going to have a learning management system which is bundled with other educational tech support for our online educational delivery of courses. Ang FlexiTech po, ibibigay natin yan sa mga students na merong strong internet connectivity sa kanilang mga bahay. At meron din silang capability in terms of the technology. For example, they own their own laptops and they have uh, strong uh, Wi-Fi units. The internet provider's uh, service is very good in their place. So therefore, they can make use of the FlexiTech. They can make use of the learning management system while they are studying their lessons. How are we going to engage our students in the FlexiTech subjects? So there are two modalities for delivering the FlexiTech subjects. The first is what we call as asynchronous modality or an asynchronous engagement. This allows students the flexibility of reading lessons, listening to lectures, viewing videos, doing classworks when it fits their schedules. They will be on self-study mode. The course guide shall have all the communication channels which they can use to contact their professors for consultation purpose. Whereas, the synchronous engagement is a live engagement with their teachers so that the students can virtually interact with their professors and classmates in real time. 
Ang isang example po niyan ay yung ginagawa natin ngayon na webinar. This is an example of a synchronous session. It's a live session and this can also happen between the teacher and the students uh, as scheduled by the teachers. Pero sa asynchronous, walang, walang live sessions na mangyayari, but their lessons will be done through the learning management system. Uh, for example, they will be required to view videos or the lectures of their teachers which are uploaded. They can view this and then they can replay if they want to, unlike in the face-to-face -face, na pagtapos ng mag-lecture yung teacher, hindi na nila yung mauulit kasi tapos na yung schedule for the day. But here, they can, again, at their own pace, review the lessons that have been uh, provided to them through the learning management system. Will there be exams and requirements in the FlexiTech modality? Yes, just like the FlexiKit modality, of course, there will also be examinations that we will be giving our students. Again, we will have two sets of major exams. We will have the midterm and the final exams. But the scheduling of these exams will be the same. Whether the students are, have chosen the FlexiKit or the FlexiTech modality, their schedule of exams will be scheduled on the same dates. Can we shift to face-to-face -to -face if the situations have improved? Okay, as explained already by our president, Madam Fay, what, whenever there, the situation would already call for it, at saka pinayagan na po tayo ng IATF because our conditions have improved in terms of the disease, the COVID-19, then we can already go to UNC for face-to-face -face and we can shift to blended learning, but we will follow the protocols that are given to us by the IATF and, of course, by our government. Can students and faculty avail of the UNC's library resources? Yes. Napakarami po nating mga aklat sa ating library, mga hard copies of books. So, kung kinakailangan humiram ng mga aklat doon, mga libro, at mga learning resources, ang ating mga teachers, as well as ang ating mga mag-aaral, ay pinapayagan po silang pumunta doon. Pero, syempre, susunod po tayo dun sa tinatawag natin ng mga protocols. But, do not worry if you will not be able to go to, to our main library because our library will also provide e-learning resources. They will provide a list of available open access online resources that may be used by faculty and students for research, teaching, and learning, whether in the modular or online modalities. What other forms of tech support can students have? The university is negotiating with telephone companies on possible options to maximize the usage of loads for internet connectivity and the capacity of bandwidth in the use of platforms such as the LMS, FB Messenger, Zoom, and Google Suite. So, siguro, sasabihin natin, ay, nako, sobrang gastos na ngayon kasi bibili kami ng maraming load para kami ay maka-access sa aming LMS, para kami ay makapag-communicate sa aming teachers and our peers using FB Messenger or through but through the, the Zoom that we will be accessing for our synchronous sessions. So do not worry because our university is now trying to negotiate with telephone companies nang sa ganon, hindi tayo masyadong magkagastos ng malaki sa mga loads na i-consume natin sa ating interaction with our teachers while doing the flexi-learning. Will there still be co-curricular activities even with the no face-to-face -face scenario? Now, I know that students are excited whenever there are activities outside of the classroom. The, in the UNC, we have what we call as academic organizations and non-academic organizations. So the students might be asking, ay napaka-boring na as, as uh, stated by Dr. Ed Fermin a while ago, 
nababato na ako, nandito lang ako sa loob ng bahay, aaral lang aral. But do not worry because our student affairs and services have already thought of activities that you can do to engage with your peers in your academic and also with your non-academic organizations. The SAS Department of the University will provide guidelines on how this could be made possible. So in conclusion, I would like to say with UNC's Red Flexi Learning, we ensure your children's safety and continuity of learning in the comfort of your homes and they will make it in the new normal. Ang kaalaman, kakayahan, at talino ng UNSiano ay magpapatuloy. Maraming salamat po and if ever there are questions that you would like to raise, later I would be willing to answer these questions. Thank you, Madam Nora, for that very informative talk. Truly, there can never be a choice without options. And because the University of Nueva Cáceres is fully committed in making sure that everyone makes it, we came up with innovative and flexible solutions aimed at catering to the diversity of the learners with careful consideration of the pressing issues of the time. The fourth topic is entitled, Piliin Mo, Flexi Learning Choices for Every Learner in the Basic Education Department. And the speaker for this talk is no less than the ever-supportive and highly committed principal of the UNC Junior High School who strived throughout the years to deliver basic education the way it should be and not just the way it is. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Mr. Ronnie Castro. Good afternoon, everyone. To my co-panelists. Good afternoon to all the participants, especially to our dear parents and guardians who are here present in this first ever academic initiated webinar conducted by the University of Nueva Cáceres. I'm Sir Ronnie Castro, the head of the Junior High School Department and the Basic Education Records Office, and I am happy and proud to present and share with you my topic to this webinar entitled, Piliin Mo, the Flexi Learning Choices for Basic Education Learner. So may I request our dear participants to sit back, relax, and digest every strand of information that I will be sharing with you about the learning continuity solutions for basic education. What is RED 3.0, the learning continuity solutions for basic education? With the Department of Education's issuance of the implementing guidelines on the school calendar and activities for school year 2020-2021, the RED or the resilient education delivery for basic education had been crafted by the academic team to ensure that the learning experience of every UNCN student is designed along the same nurturing care that the school is known for. Rather than being complacent, the basic education department chose to lead their students towards continuing on their quest of knowledge, competencies, and values through learning from home strategies. And although specific directives may change, the department shall remain consistent that the safety of our students, faculty, and personnel shall be the top priority while we remain committed to the continuity of learning in accordance with the UNC's vision guided by DepEd guidelines for basic education. This commitment for continuing access to quality learning is the reason why our resilient education delivery, or the RED, has been refined and upgraded to version 3.0 and is ready for implementation 
comes the official opening of school year 2020-2021 for basic education on August 24, 2020. The UNC Red 3.0 for basic education is centered on the continuity of learning of our students through flexible learning solutions in accordance with the Deaf Ed Order number 007 series of 2020. To operationalize its implementation, the department through its different units the elementary, the junior high school, and the senior high school had conducted a wide consultation with parents and students on their delivery preference through a survey wherein a great majority preferred a combination of the FlexiTech driven and modular modalities. Based on the premise that face to face delivery will not yet be feasible when the new school year opens in August 2020. What is RED 3.0 for basic education? The RED 3.0 for basic education is an alternative educational delivery anchored on a no face-to-face -face or physical interaction of faculty and students in the classroom. It is a flexible learning solution to keep our students and faculty safe and continue to learn from the safety of their homes. Our RED 3.0 solutions are premised on three basic parameters of engaging our students. First parameter is the inclusive education delivery to capture the learning needs of the three cohorts of students. Cohort one, students with stable connectivity. Cohort two, students with limited connectivity. And cohort three, students with zero connectivity. The second parameter is the flexible learning delivery that would suit the learning from home conditions of the students and the resources available to the faculty, which can easily be converted to blended learning once IATF, LGU, and DepEd shall allow face-to-face -face classes with an option for parents and students to continue learning from home to reduce the risk of exposure to the virus while saving transportation costs and board and lodging costs. The third parameter is the OBE or the outcome-based education. This is uh, considering the learning pace of our students. And in the crafting of our RED learning solutions, we have considered the scenario that reporting physically at the regular school classroom setup might endanger our learners who belong to the vulnerable group of our population. Therefore, our RED 3.0 for basic education is anchored and compliant with the Department of Education's mandate that learning and education process must continue despite these trying times with utmost consideration at the safety, health, and comfort of the learners. Let us now proceed to the meat of my presentation topic, the red learning modalities in mo the flexi choices for basic education learners. What are the red 3.0 learning modalities for UNC basic education learners? The basic education department is happy to announce that the formal start of our classes for school year 2020-2021 
will be on August 24, 2020. The school opening will not necessarily mean the traditional face-to-face -face learning in the classroom. And considering that the pandemic is still there, the safety of our students, faculty, and personnel is and will continue to be UNC's top priority. We therefore carefully plan the flexible learning modalities to ensure that learning will continuously happen within the safety of your homes. In the light of the need for schools to adapt to the emerging new normal and to ensure that teaching and learning effectiveness shall continue, the basic education department will adopt two learning modalities specific to the group of learners or cohorts. First is the FlexiTech driven modality for learners with devices and internet connection. And the second one is the FlexiKit modular modality for those who have issues on access and internet connection. So this was already mentioned by our dear president and our VP for academic affairs. Both modalities are anchored on the coherent, inclusive education delivery of the university and the learning continuity plan of the Department of Education. What are the salient features of the FlexiTech driven learning modality in the basic education? So we are proud and happy that this modality is the best option for students with stable internet connectivity. This is an online learning modality, which is a refinement of the common distance or online learning, wherein the learning engagement of the learner is a combination of synchronous online or the live with a teacher that uses varied digital electronic resources and different technology-driven learning platforms or conference bridges such as Zoom, Hangouts, Google Classrooms, and other applications that may suit the needs of the learners. And via a synchronous delivery, where self-paced learning packets and instructions are uploaded by the teacher in the LMS or the learning management system. Study guides in digital format are likewise provided as backup mechanism to a scaffold learning activities and allow collaboration and self-exploration. How about the FlexiKit modular modality in the basic education? This is the best option for students with zero connectivity or zero internet connectivity. This is an offline learning modality with complete provision of study guides or what we call the red learning kit. That's why we call it a flexi kit in digital format contained in an electronic device or a tablet that will be provided to the learners. This is a self-study material that is effective even without the teacher's constant facilitation because steps and instructions on how the lessons, the tasks, the activities will be carried out are already reflected and properly explained in simple and detailed format. Two teacher support system will be provided in this type of modality. 
to monitor and guide students in their home, learn from home activities anytime via FB Messenger, voice call, or text messaging. Regardless of the type of modality, we have prescribed the inclusion of a tablet. Why? Yes, tablet was included. It is because our curriculum delivery had been designed taking into account two major considerations. Number one, the future readiness of our students aligned to a digital future. And number two, the environment sustainability of paperless process. Thus, the tablet had been part of the learning design of the flexi approach for a happy learning experience of our students. We also wanted to be transparent in terms of our fees. That's why the cost of the tablet is presented as part of the other fees. We have carefully studied our school costing and we reduced the miscellaneous fees by almost 56%, such that even if we included the cost of the tablet, the total school fees is still very much lower compared to last year. And for purposes of good planning, we have to allocate about a month to order these tablets to be ready by August 24 and ensure a happy learning experience for your child, our student. The good news is you can enroll with only 3,000 and you don't have to pay the whole year fees. That's why we have already floated our payment options for you to, to choose from that would fit your financial budget. There are concerns. How about those who have already tablets and who will request for an exemption? So we will advise them that upon enrollment, they can inform us or through our enrollment counselors of what available devices they have at home. If found sufficient to the learning requirements, then we can make exemptions. But even if you have available devices, such as computers or laptops at home, we can deny the fact that there are also other users at home that might affect the continuity of learning of your child. And since the learning session should encourage the students to study in the same time as school hours, it is really recommended that the tablet must be at hand as it contains already the complete study guides or the learning modules which the child can use exclusively for his study and ensure that he has the easy access to the learning materials during the designated study time. There are also concerns. Why is it that the use of textbooks and other learning materials is still being recommended? With the learning design and approach that we have, that we crafted, the academic team still recommends the use of prescribed textbook per learning area, considering that the learning module is just a wrapped around study guide, meaning it contains different learning materials from different sources, which include the prescribed textbook for the subject. 
highlighted in the modules are the learning packets and the detailed conversational instructions for the students to be guided as to how the learning activities, the performance tasks, and other activities will be accomplished even without the physical presence of the teacher. Therefore, students cannot proceed with the learning activities found in the modules unless they have to read some content from the prescribed textbooks and other materials for them to accomplish the task required of them. So under the two flexi modalities, how will you deliver the different subjects? That's also one of the queries. And how many hours will the students spend per learning area? In order to help the students adjust to the new normal and for them not to be overwhelmed by the new ways of teaching, learning, delivery, the subject offerings for the school year will be divided into two groups or clusters. For the elementary and junior high school, the first five months will be allotted to the first four subjects and the other five subjects for the remaining months of the school year. For the senior high school, a total of six courses will be delivered per quarter. And following the prescribed guidelines regarding the allowable screen time for online and synchronous sessions, for preschool and elementary, we'll be allocating a minimum of one hour to a maximum of two hours per day, while for the junior high school and the senior high school, a minimum of two hours to a maximum of four hours per day. The rest will be utilized for other modes of delivery in order to accomplish and finish the required learning competencies, such as the MELC or the most essential learning competencies recommended by the Department of Education. So for the preschool, our clustering will be the first group of subject offering that will run for five months, they will offer two subjects, English and Math. While for the remaining five months, the second group of subjects, they will be offering Filipino and Science. For grades one to six, the first group of subject offerings will be English, Math, Araling Panlipunan, and ESP. While for the second group of subjects, or second clusters, will be Science, Filipino, Mother Tongue or Hele, Mape, and Computer. For the junior high school, the first cluster subjects are the following to be offered for the first five months English, Math, Araling Panlipunan, and Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao, or Values Education. While the second cluster subjects to be offered for the remaining months of the year are Science, Filipino, TLE, MAPE, ICT for grades 9 and 10. For senior high school, the course schedule will maintain its design. A total of six courses will be delivered in the quarter. These are four linked courses, Mathematics, English, SciTech, and Specialized, plus Filipino and PE. The TVL track will follow the same course schedule and its course will run twice a week with three hours per session except PE that will run once a week with three hours per session. As far as our grading system is concerned, there's also a query. Is there a modification in the grading system to be used under the flexed modalities? Our answer, none. The, the same grading standards set by the Department of Education 
for its learning area shall be followed in all cohorts. The grade of students is based on his or her performance in the three major components, the written work, the major exams, and the performance tasks. So it was already made mention by our VP for Academics how our examinations will be conducted. It can either be off-site or on-site if the IATF and the DepEd would allow for a minimum, minimum number of students observing minimum health protocol. The department shall ensure that everyone will make it, as made mentioned by our president, by providing all system supports without sacrificing the integrity and quality of instruction. This school year 2020-2021, the basic education department shall focus on authentic assessment for its component and adopt the can pass and no fail policy with the conditions that the learner comply with the required academic attendance, submit written outputs, and able to demonstrate the intended learning outcomes of the subject or the course. In this type of modality, we believe that education is a joint venture between the school and home. As we work with our students to help them learn about the world around them through the prescribed curriculum, we highly appreciate the support that parents and guardians give to their children or to their ward at home as they strive to reach their learning goals. So there are all squares from pair. What are my what are my roles as parents or as guardians? And how will I assist my child or my ward in doing his or her learn from home activities with this new setup? So we already crafted some specific roles and guidelines for parents and guardians in the delivery of the flexi learning. Flexi tech and flexi kit modality. And the full version will be delivered during the orientation session to be conducted exclusively for the parents of our students. But I will give you some of the specific roles so that at least you have already an idea of what you're going to do, what are some of your specific roles as parents, as our partners. So the primary role is not to teach, but just to assist the child to cope with the learning delivery. We highly encourage the parents or the guardians to help us as our partners to monitor the progress of our students in doing their learning activities, set the do's and the don'ts, to achieve the learning goals at home and also provide a learning space at home where the child can do his or her daily task. So recognizing that in these trying times when the only solution is to continue learning from home, the role of the parents and the guardians in the learning process is as indispensable as the teacher. As learning companion of the child, Parents' active involvement in the following tasks are highly encouraged. So these are some of the topics that we will be uh, discussing during our orientation. Organizing the learning environment at home, maintaining open communication line with the teachers, providing support but not to teach, monitoring attendance in the online synchronous delivery, and compliance of the synchronous uh, output. So these are all part of the parent support system. But we do understand also that parents have other things to do. 
this role can made essay by just checking once in a while the learning management system because there there is that system wherein we can really track how our students uh, do or attend to their learn from home activities submission deadlines so that they will be on track and they have that uh, checklist in order to avoid piling up of activities and uh, tasks so that will be uh, discussed thoroughly during the orientation orientation session and a red 3.0 guidebook for parents will also be provided by the department. As to the timelines, because there are also orientation, uh, parents uh, queries about orientation or guides to be provided. So to ensure that parents can engage fully to their assigned roles, the university will provide the following support system and program. That's what I have told you. So the timelines are already here, the, the orientation schedule. So an orientation session before the opening of classes will be done. So this is a session, both an orientation on the role of parents and guardians in the implementation of the flexible learning modality and a walkthrough on the use of the learning management system and likewise the le red learning kits and provisions of the red waste guide for parents and its parent will be received the handbook containing essential information such as how to access the unc parents portal lms feedback inbox schedules of assessment submission of performance tasks and new school policies not only for parents but also for our students our class advisors and subject teachers per learning area are ready to welcome and to orient our students before the start of the opening of classes comes August 24, 2020. We are now open to accept and ready to face our students virtually or offline. So our enrollment is now ongoing, off-site and on-site. To be considered officially enrolled, the student should have completed the process of the off-site on, or on-site enrollment from registration to submission of school records through the university online enrollment system portal and payment of required school fees. There are some documents that are really important for incoming grade seven and transferees because we are accepting transferees from grade eight to 10 and even from in the senior high school. So report card or the form 138, certificate of good moral character, birth certificate, and two by two colored latest photo. For the old students, for the re-enrollees, only the report card is required. So our dear parents, students, friends, the school opening is always a happy event at UNC Basic Education Department, we will ensure that this school year will be like no other. We can only do this with your utmost support, our dear parents and guardians. Under this new setup, we are appealing to you as our partners to help us motivate and encourage our students to be fully engaged in the learn from home activities that will be initiated and prepared by our teachers. This is an exceptionally challenging time for us, but 
we will move forward with confidence assured with your continued support. Basic education life is the happiest times in our child's life journey, our children's life journey. And with the foregoing methodology, coupled with the holistic development of your children along the values of UNC, we can battle the uncertainties by being one and number one in the thrust of providing our students the best learning platform even beyond the four corners of the classroom. With this, I want to say thank you so much and may God bless us all. Stay safe and good day, everyone. In the University of Nueva Cáceres, we build a better tomorrow for our students. With our future-ready facilities, progressive teaching methods, a nurturing culture for success. Our Learn As You Earn programs make it easier for working students to finish college. We ensure their bright careers. It all starts here, in the heart of Bicol. The University of Nueva Cáceres by Ayala's AC Education. Nurturing better tomorrows for all. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are still watching the first episode of the UNC webinar series the first ever academic-initiated webinar series in Bicolandia. I would like to thank Sir Ronnie for that very informative talk. In line with our promise that everyone would make it, UNC has taken various initiatives to expand the financial assistance platforms available to its students. Our next topic is entitled, Karamay Mo Kami, Financial Assistance at UNC. Our last speaker for this afternoon's forum was the former head of the campus ministry and the scholarship and grants office of the Holy Angel University in Angeles City, Pampanga. She was also the former chairperson of the professional education department, the former principal of the elementary department, and a former part-time faculty in the College of Education of the same university from 1986 to 2015. Truly, the University of Nueva Cáceres is blessed to have her as the University's Director for Scholarship and Grants. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Ms. Maria Teresa D. Pajardo. Good afternoon. Um, sa panahon ko ngayon ng pandemya, ang University of Nueva Cáceres ay karamay niyo. Ang UNC ay patuloy na gumagawa ng mga hakbang upang maging normal ang pag-aaral ng aming mga estudyante at masuportahan ang kanilang mga pamilya kahit ang sitwasyon natin ngayon ay kinatawag na nating new normal. Ang topic ko po ngayon ay ang tulong na pwedeng gawin ng UNC para maging karamay nyo kami sa panahon ng pandemic na ito. Thank you, Christel, sa uh, introduction. Ako po si Matet Pajardo. Ako po yung Director ng Scholarships and Grants ng University of Nueva Cáceres at inutusan po ako na i-discuss sa inyo ang pwede nating gawing tulong para sa mga taong apektado, para sa mga estudyante namin apektado at ang kanilang mga pamilya ng pandemya nito. Meron pong pag-asa at yan po ay ang aking trabaho ngayong hapon para sabihin sa inyo kung ano ang mga yun. So I will let I will share my screen with you so that I can discuss everything that I will be offering to all our students, especially those who are financially uh, struck at this point. Ang University of Nueva Cáceres po, kahit na wala pa yung panahon ng pandemya, ay may ginagawa ng mga hakbang para matulungan ng aming mga estudyante. We have the scholarships, discounts, and educational loans available to our students. At sa mga yun po, pinag, uh, titibayan po namin ang partnership namin sa aming mga agencies para makatulong kami lalo sa pagbibigay ng damay sa aming mga estudyante. Allow me po to explain to you all the scholarship platforms, discounts, and educational loans that are available to our students at the University of Nueva Cáceres. At UNC, we recognize and award three types of students. 
first, the academically good students. So to recognize these academically good students, we have the following scholarships in place already for our students. So the most prestigious scholarship, as they say at UNC, is the President Jaime Hernandez Scholarship. Actually, at this point in time, we have processed and screened all those qualified for school year 2020-2021. And last month, we have uploaded already the qualified uh, scholars in our social media accounts. And I contacted them personally, and some of them are enrolled already in our schools. So we have 20 qualified PJ8 scholars for the college and 10 for our senior high school. So I would like to congratulate the students who are with us already. For the College of Law, we have also the Antonio Moran Season Scholarship. I have coordinated already with our testing department and maybe by next week, the applicants will be uh, taking their scholarship qualifying exam, of course, following the social distancing uh, instituted by our university. Sa mga current students po namin, we have also our Academic Achievement Scholarship. They need not apply. All they have to do is wait for their uh, scholarship certificate during the semester because our college registrar is giving me the list of qualified students every semester with a grade of 1.4 and above. And my, my office is the one in charge of processing their scholarship. So for those who have, uh, my dear students, for those of you who have a uh, general weighted average of one point four and above, just wait for your scholarship certification. Now, if you don't receive that, you can just make a follow-up from my office. For our entrance scholarship, this is a scholarship that recognizes uh, the quality education of our feeder schools because this is a scholarship intended for incoming grade 7, incoming grade 10, income in coming, in coming grade 7, in coming grade 11, in coming college students, and also for our incoming students in the graduate schools. So we recognize, our university is recognizing the top ranking graduates of schools, of our feeder schools, and all they have to do is to give a certification of their rank, and my office will process their scholarship. Aside from the academically good students, we support talent scholarship. Even if we have the pandemic at this point in time, we still support varsity. At sa panahon ko ngayon, kahit na hindi kami nagpi-face-to-face, nagpa-practice po sila, and they are guided by their coaches. So we have varsity scholarship for elementary, for junior high school, for senior high school and college. And the one in charge of this is the Sports Development Office under the leadership of Mr. Roel Rosales. So those students who are interested to apply and undergo uh, tryouts, just contact Mr. Roel Rosales, the Sports Development Office. The contact numbers will be given to you later. In UNC, we believe in the power of music. So we are music lovers. So we have Greek club. Uh, in the Glee Club, the students who are coming from senior high school and college are the ones uh, joining the Glee Club. That is a particular moderator in charge of the Glee Club in the person of Mr. Joseph Condeno. So for those students who would like to apply and submit themselves for audition, they can just send an email to me and I will endorse their name to Mr. Joseph Condeno. We have also the band with the majorettes. For the elementary, we have the, uh, the band and the majorettes also, and they are enjoying scholarships. So there is a particular person in charge with elementary and junior high school. But for those who are interested, they can just contact the principal's office and they will be guided how to apply for this uh, band and majorette form. For those who are willing to work naman, and for those who are wanting to be a scholar as a working student in the University of Nuevo Caceres, they are assigned to the different workstations. So we have 150 slots available to be for our student assistance program. But even if we have the pandemic, we are still supporting this scholarship. And don't you know that 
uh, this coming semester and during the summer, when they enroll as a student assistant, they are doing their jobs also online. So our, we are preparing for that for this coming school year. Even if we don't have face-to-face -face and they are not required to report here in our university, they will be given jobs online. So they are assured of jobs. And for those incoming students who are interested to apply as a student assistant, you can just send your application to me. I will give you my email address later. Um, to recognize your efforts in choosing our school as your school and the school of your children, we are also giving discounts. If you pay in cash, and we encourage you to pay in cash fund enrollment, you will be given a 10% outright discount. For those who are uh, children of our, the children, the parents of uh, our students, you can apply for an alumni discount. For students no man, who are graduates of UNC, graduates from grade 6, graduate from grade 10, from grade 12, and college graduates going to uh, graduate school, they can also apply for loyalty discounts. You know, uh, my dear participants, there are families who are really loyal and they send all their children to school. So we are happy to tell you also that members of the same family, your mother-to-patent siblings, we are giving discounts to them ranging from 10% to 50% discount. For our graduate school and for those step and employees, the teachers, the guidance counselors, and the principals, if they will enroll in our graduate school, they will also be given discount every semester, every time they enroll. So all these discounts are available and my office will help applicants and you will be guided how to avail of these different discounts. As I've said a while ago, gumagawa po kami ng mga bank para um, ma mapalawak ang partnership namin sa iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno kahit na hindi ahensya ng gobyerno, para mas marami kaming matulungan sa UNC. Especially now that we have the pandemic, marami pong pumupunta sa office ko at sinasabi hindi na sila mag-aaral or wala silang pang-enroll. So my office is doing its best to help the students and give hope to all the students. So, I would like to inform our participants that we have partnership with NGAs. NGA means a national government agencies. We have scholars from CHED, marami po yun. Yung Tulong Donong and CSP, which means Commission on Higher Education Scholarship Programs, and also UMIPAS. I will explain to you later what are the scholarships that the government is giving to us. So, for CHED scholarship, Nag-raise po yung subsidy that CHED is giving to our uh, scholars from 15,000 to 30,000 per semester. Ito po yung mga full scholars and half scholars. Um, meron din po tayong tinatawag na tulong-dunong na binibigay ng CHED under UNIPAS. And one good thing about UNC is that we have our tertiary education subsidy I, by virtue of the Public Act 1091, signed by President Duterte in 2018, we are so blessed that we were given around more or less 300 grantees every school year, and we started this in 2018. So, um, the grant that the government is giving is 30,000 per semester. But hindi po ang holy, ang, ang, ang University of Nueva Cáceres ang nag a approve ng scholarship pero ang gobyerno po all we have to do ang opisina ko po ginagawa is to apply all our students to CHED Unipass at sila na po ang mag approve niyan so sinasabi ko po sa mga incoming college students don't worry when you enroll to UNC you will be applied to this government subsidies without you knowing it just wait, and if you qualify, my office will be the one to inform you that you have this subsidy approved already without you knowing it, without the, uh, the effort of applying because UNC is doing the job for you. So incoming college students, take note that we have this government subsidies available for you. And also the CHET scholarship, 
uh, UNC is one of the top point centers of you of CHED scholarship. So the scholarship will be channeled to UNC if you want to enroll in our university and be a CHED scholar. For our, for our junior high school department, we have the ESC. And for our senior high school department, we have the senior high school voucher program. Uh, Mr. Castro, the, pres the principal of the junior high school department, is the one in charge of the ESC. So our students who are enrolling in our junior high school will report to Mr. Castro's office in the, the junior high school department, and you will be registered in the ESC, and you have to submit necessary documents. Uh, I advise students that you have to enroll now or in coming grade 7 because I think uh, the ESC is on the first come first serve basis and we have to look into your economic profile once you enroll at UNC. Now for our senior high school, tuloy-tuloy po yung subsidy. So from grade 7 to grade 10 ESC and then for um, senior high school, Grade 11 and grade 12, you will be given the Senior High School Voucher Program. The principal's office of the Senior High School is the one in charge of processing this. So once you enroll, you have to report to the principal's office and you will be guided how you can, um, how you can help this Senior High School Voucher Program. UNC partnered with the different NGOs, non-government organizations. So one of which is the Ayala Foundation. We have slots approved by Ayala, and at this point in time, we are processing applic applicants for Ayala Foundation. And we have also BPI partnership. This is uh, a new partnership with BPI Foundation for COVID-affected families. And we also have an existing partnership with Love Life Bank Foundation and Rotary Club of Naga and San Miguel Foundation Incorporated. My office is not uh, complacent about resting on this different partnership with NGOs because my, the challenge given to me is to expand partnership with a lot of agencies, both in government and non-government organizations. Um, the local government units, they also have scholars. So if you want to ask help in your barangay or city, you can approach your barangay captain and apply for a scholarship. And these local government units will refer you to UNC and will give you a certification. And all you have to do is just give your certification to us and then we will process the scholarship and we will have partnership with your local government unit. Actually, just last week, um, one local government approached me and offered a partnership, but the, the, the grantees should be coming from their barangay. So all you have to do in coming students in college or either in junior high school or senior high school, if you need help financially, your local government units are also willing to support you and they will be coordinating with us. But UNC is trying to exert all efforts to partner with local governments and we will help them locate those students who are really needing help. Also, our alumni association, uh, the, um, the batch presidents and also the association itself, they are very generous to help our financially strapped students through the alumni office and through the scholarships and grants office. There are students who are at the middle of the semester, they are needing help and they will come to my office or to alumni office and they will say, Mom, magdadrop na po ako, what are you going to do? And the alumni association is there to rescue these students. All you need to do, current students, our students at UNC, all you have to do is knock at the door at alumni office or my office and we will see what we can do because alumni association is very generous to help our students because they want you to graduate and finish your schooling. Um, because of the pandemic, the finance team, which I am part of, uh, designed a scheme where you can enroll easily. Uh, Mr. Castro mentioned already that 
students across all departments can enroll paying 3000 for the entrance fee. Yes, it's true because before we are requiring students to pay more than the 3000. So at this point because of the pandemic, you can come to UNC and pay 3000 for your entrance fee. Now what about those students with balance? They have the 3000 but they have balance during the last full year or last semester. If your balance during the last semester or last school year is 20% or less of the total assessment, you can enroll paying 3,000. Tandaan niyo po yan, no? If you have your balance na 20% or less on the previous semester or previous school year, you can enroll paying 3,000. Now, the problem is, I have 3,000 but my balance is more than 20%. So what are you going to do? You go to my office or you write me online because uh, you can reach me online and we will see what we can do because we have educational loans. We have educational loans because UNC has this project which is called Everybody Shares. Don't you know that your teachers and employees are sharing their salary, part of their salary and we have accumulated funds already, and we will use these funds to help students with balances. Um, as much as possible, the balance should be 20%. But for those students who have balances of uh, less than, or you do not have the 3,000, you only have 1,000, and you will say, hindi na ako mag enroll what will I do? Please go to my office and my staff will entertain you, and you will just sign an agreement with your parent, and that we will let you in, and we will let you enroll. Um, my name is Mateb. So if you have problems, you can call these local numbers, 4726-100-LOCAL-179. And my office is open at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at AMS Building, Room 118. My staff is also available to respond to your call because we have this hotline number that is plus on the screen. Now, even if I am not here in my office because we avoid face-to-face -face interaction or coordination, you can apply online. Just send your inquiries, your application to my uh, official email address which is sgo at unc.edu.ph. Now, for our participants and incoming students who are asking, ano naman po ang mga scholarship na available sa UNC? Ito po yung link, www.unc.edu.ph slash scholarships. Nandun po lahat ng itatanong nyo about scholarship, yung mga documentary requirements at yung contact person na kadadalhan nyo ng inyong mga requirements. Um... Bago ko po i-end ang aking presentation, gusto ko pong sabihin sa mga parents at sa mga estudyante natin na sa ngayon na may pandemya at sigurado kami na mayroon kayong mga problema, financially, sabi nga po ni Dr. Fermin, that one of the effects of this pandemic is on the economic status of the families. UNC is there to give solutions. Of course, we cannot do everything, but we will try our best to help you in our best capacity. So, please enroll, even if you have your balances, just prepare your 3,000. If you have your problem, you email me and I will be the one to respond to you. I am, even on Saturdays and Sundays, I am looking at my email and responding right away to your queries and also your applications. Gusto kong i-end ang aking presentation Sana po naging clear kung anong mga solution na ibinigay namin dito sa UNC para sa mga affected na students and their families. Gusto ko mong sabihin na sa UNC, gray man o red ang kulay, karamay niyo po kami. Maraming salamat po. I am willing to entertain questions later about how to apply scholarship and what scholarships are available to our prospective and current students. Salamat po ulit. In the University of Nueva Cáceres, we build a better tomorrow for our students with our future-ready facilities, progressive teaching methods, a nurturing culture for success, 
Our Learn As You Earn programs make it easier for working students to finish college. We ensure their bright careers. It all starts here, in the heart of Bicol. The University of Nueva Cáceres by Ayala's AC Education. Nurturing better tomorrows for all. Thank you, Ma'am Matet, for that very reassuring talk on UNC's commitment to make sure that everyone does make it. And even though we cannot do everything, UNC is trying its best to do something, and that is something that the community appreciates. Now we are down to the last portion of the first episode of the webinar series, the question and answer portion. The first question is directed for Dr. Feileya Patria Lauraya, the president of the University of Nueva Cáceres. And the question is from Reggie H. Padre, Master of Arts in Teaching Mathematics. The question is, if I'm already a student of UNC, is it possible for me to continue studying in UNC even when I'm working abroad? Thank you very much, Reggie. And I think Reggie is online and she is in Riyadh right now. Uh, thank you very much, Reggie, for joining us in this UNC first webinar. The authority given by CHED under its guidelines for flexible learning is only applicable for one year. And therefore, it means that um, we have to consider the circumstances of our students, and these are usually for students that are in the country. However, your situation is unique because you are already enrolled in the Philippines such that you will simply be continuing your master's degree program, MAT in mathematics. So we will get back to you, Reggie. We will check the guidelines. If you will be able to be qualified for the distance learning of UNC graduate school, because the guidelines right now prohibits the schools for using the flexible learning guidelines for transnational education program. However, since you are already our students, our student before you went to um, Riyadh, I think you have a special case. Um, can I request Ed Fermin? Ed, can you add to what I said? You're correct, uh, Dr. Fay, in the sense that uh, there are strict regulations uh, relative to the uh, admission of uh, students from um, other nations, uh, uh, given the circumstances of education or higher education at the moment. But uh, I've taken note of that and I'd like to find out as well because if we continue to uh, accommodate new students given the one-year provision of CHED and our flexible learning solutions are the only way through which we can deliver education, I would want to uh, be mindful of the openness of the commission in extending the same arrangement for students who are uh, doing some form of uh, open and distance education, particularly in graduate education. Thank you, Ed. And so Reggie, we will get back to you. Um, we will clarify this because your case is a special one. You are always very much welcome to UNC. And even if it's not in the question, uh, Kian, I'd like to say that those who have gone from Manila and they are now back in the provinces and would like to stay in the province, even if they are not in Naga City, our FlexiTech program will allow you to enroll in UNC and continue your learning even if you are in Naga or in uh, other parts of Kamener Sur or even in Albay and Sorsogon. So get in touch with UNC online enrollment system and we will attend to your needs. No need to go back to Manila. Stay in the province. Come to UNC. Thank you, Madam Faye and Dr. Ed for answering that question from Reggie. You don't have to go to Manila anymore. You can stay in Bicol. You can stay where you are. You can stay where it is convenient and comfortable for you. You can stay in UNC. So for the second question, it is directed for Dr. Nora Elizabeth Manikis, the Vice President for Academic Affairs 
of the University of Nueva Cáceres. It is from Henry Rose M. Cadag, a student of BS Ar Architecture. The question is, since the pandemic is taking longer than we imagined, what will happen to students with in-progress grade? Hello. Thank you for the question, Ms. Kadag. Uh, I understand your concern because in the Red 2.0, our guideline said that we, you will have a catch-up session in the first two weeks of August for you to be able to have the opportunity of converting your IP grades or IP marks into numerical ratings. But do not worry because we already have an agreement with your professors, with your teachers, that the catch-up sessions should already be conducted within these summer months and therefore you will already have the chance of complying with the requirements and of having your grade or your IP mark converted into a numerical rating. So just please contact your teacher or whoever that professor is and he will be willing to help you so that you'll be able to have the grade for your subject and it will no longer be a problem for you once you are already started your you already start your lessons in the first semester starting this August. Back to you, Kian. The third question is for is directed to Mr. Ronnie Castro, the principal of the UNC Junior High School. It is from Gabriel Jacob B. Bermejo, a grade eight student. The question is, what will be the extent of the parents' participation since the mode of instruction is practically homeschooling? Thank you so much, Gabriel, for that uh, question. Uh, even in the old normal, when we have the the face to face, we already always believe that uh, we cannot do the different uh, programs and projects of the university for the benefit of our students without the help of the parents. So with this new modality, so I already uh, made mention in my presentation a while ago that we always believe that education is really a joint venture between the school and the home. And we do highly appreciate the support of the parents and the guardians in order for their children and ward to strive to reach their learning, learning goals at home. And as parents, so they will not, as what I have mentioned, they will not actually teach the students. They will just guide them as to what will be the learning task. That's why uh, we will be having our orientation for our parents so that they will be guided on as to what extent they can really help and assist in the learning from home activities of their children. So don't worry, Gabriel. So we already included that in our uh, program, in our activities before the start of the school year. And uh, in, our, in my presentation, I already presented the timelines so that, so that uh, we have already a guide for our orientation activities, not only for the students, but also for the parents. So we appreciate that question. And I do hope that we could be able to really guide our dear parents as our partners, because we, we cannot do this alone. It takes two to tango. So particularly uh, in this time of pandemic, wherein we are delivering learning at the safety of your home. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Sir Ronnie. Truly, it takes a village to raise a child. And though we, the parents cannot do everything for the kid or for the child, they can always guide them, support them, make sure that they will be able to learn the things that they have to. The fourth question is for Dr. Nora Elizabeth Manikis, the Vice President for Academic Affairs of the University of Nueva Cáceres. The question is from Maricon Silo from the College of Arts and Sciences. The question is, 
is it possible to shift to another course? How can this be done? Okay, if the question is shifting from one degree to another, of course that is possible. Uh, but you have to do that during the enrollment and not in the middle of the semester. If your question is shifting from one modality to another in the middle of the semester, like for example, you want to shift from using the FlexiKit into the modular, I mean into the FlexiTech modality, we discourage students and even the faculty from doing that in the middle of the semester in order to avoid complexities of the transferring of the student from one modality to another. So it's as simple as that. We want everything to be simple, to be organized. That's why we will discourage the shifting of modality while already in the middle of the semester. But if your question is about shifting to another course or to another degree, from one degree to another, of course, we will not prohibit you from doing that that is your choice and you will be guided by your uh, program head and by your team on how to do it i hope i answered that question thank you so much vp nora the fifth question is for dr Fay lauraya the president of the university of meva caceres the question is from the pantograph X Malaya, the official student publication of the University of Nueva Cáceres Senior High School Department. And the question is, will there be student formation and other extracurricular activities this coming school year? If there are, how will these be done? What was the name of the person who asked the question, Kian? Um, the question is from the Pantogra Pantograph X Malaya, the official student publication of Hello. UNC Senior okay. High School. Okay, thank you, Kian. Uh, thank you very much for this question. I'd like to say that student development is part and very much important parcel of the holistic formation of UNC students. And because of this pandemic, as we switch the modality of educational delivery, there is also a need to switch the delivery and encounter needed in order to promote the development of our students. And we already have a coined word for that using the Nagenyo terminology. Suruwai pero sararo. Suruwai Pero sararo. Because we have to exercise physical distancing, we even have to cover our faces with a face mask, and we are also going on different modality in the engagement of our student. So even if suruwai, you are scattered, you, you are uh, connecting with each other from the distance of your home, the essence of that connectivity is, is staying connected to be united. And I was just informed by our Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs, Madam Armin, that we had made changes because we could not hold the election of our officers. We have made a provisionary emergency system in order to designate uh, temporary officers of our student government and practicing our participatory process of bringing in the ideas from student leaders and I even have directed Madam Armin to create the star circle our former student leaders who have already graduated to come together as a circle of good for UNC to be able to contribute on how we will be able to do that switch under the banner of Suruwai Pero Sararo. This is a difficult situation and how we will be able to switch is a continuing and a work in progress. And I hope that the pantograph will be part of that dialogue on how we could enhance the continuity of our student development program. 
included in the learning kits, whether it is FlexiTech or FlexiKit, is what we call a student journal. It is an accumulation. It's like a savings bank of the activities that you will do while learning from home. And the focus is bringing your leadership, bringing your uh, talents to the community, like our intention of bringing UNC to the community, such that student activities, while at a distance, can still be relevant for community development and is still along the philosophy of education of UNC of living a purposeful student life. So thank you very much, Pantograph, and back to you, Kian. Thank you, Madam Fei. Um, thank you for reassuring us that UNC is fully committed to making sure in making sure that we will have a happy student life. The sixth question is for Mr. Ronnie Castro, the principal of the UNC Junior High School, and the question is from Eva Joy Inigo Abesina, a parent of a grade four student. The question is, what if we already have a gadget that our child could use for the online classes? Can we just pay for the installation of modules instead of paying for the amount that includes the tablet? Hello, Kian. Hello, sir. I know who asked the question, Mrs. Bicinio. The question was asked by a parent. Miss Eva Abesina. Uh, 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 thank you so much, Ma'am uh, Abesina. So actually, I already uh, discussed that uh, question, query, because we already encountered that uh, with our enrollment counselors, because we are already having our enrollment, that uh, though regardless of the type of modality that we have, we still prescribe the inclusion of a tablet. However, uh, since there are really queries and concerns from parents, that how about those who have already the gadget? Can they be exempted? Or just uh, having the, the modular? So we are not closing our door for that. So because uh, as what I have stated earlier, that upon enrollment, they can just inform us of what available device that they have at home. Then, if found sufficient to the learning requirement, we can make exemptions. But still, I want to reiterate that even you have available devices, such as computers or laptops at home, we can uh, deny the fact that there are also other users at home that might affect the continuity of learning of your child. And since the learning session should encourage the student to study at the same time as school hours, it is really recommended that the tablet must be at hand as it contains already the complete study guides, learning modules, which the child can use exclusively for his study and ensure that he has the easy access to the learning materials during the designated study time. But if there is really sufficient learning uh, requirement, we can uh, grant the exemption. However, so we cannot really assure that uh, the student have that kind of seamless uh, learning continuity at home. And at the same time, uh, since uh, assuming that we have the, the, the device, so we can, it is really expected that uh, it will be used exclusively for the learning of your uh, child at home, especially during uh, the scheduled synchronous session and uh, asynchronous uh, delivery. Although we have our LMS, so that is also another backup mechanism wherein uh, though you will not have the, the tablet because you have the gadget already, so some of the contents of the study guides can still be uploaded by the teacher in the LMS. So that's my take for uh, the question. I hope uh, I made some uh, clarity on regarding the question. 
Thanks, Thank Kian. you for that answer, Sir Ronnie. For the last question, um, it is for Dr. Nora Manikis, the Vice President for Academic Affairs of UNC. The question is from Pantograph X Malaya, the official student publication of the UNC Senior High School. And the question is, how will the drop-off system work? How often will it operate? Who will deliver and receive the modules and other documents to and from the students? Okay, Kian. Thank you for the question, uh, Pantograph X Malaya. Actually, the system for the drop-off point, uh, the office in charge of that is our office of the VP for academic, uh, sorry, VP for administration. That's uh, Sir Chito Palmiano. But on his behalf, I would like to present to you the plan of the VPA office about the distribution of these materials. So um, for students within Camarinesur, except the towns of Caramoan, Siruma, Garchiturena, and Presentacion, the administration will identify strategic places in every municipality of Camarinesur to be designated as pick-up or drop-off points. Designated university vehicles will distribute the learning modules or materials to those identified pick-up and drop-off points. For students outside Camarinesur, including Caramoan, Siruma, Garchitorena, and Presentacion, modules will be sent through courier. For students in Naga City, UNC will identify specific employees or alumni partners whose location or residence shall become the area for pick-up or drop-off points of learning modules and materials. UNC will also serve as the pick-up or drop-off of learning modules and materials for students who will opt to get their documents from the school. And specific classrooms of the university will be assigned for each department and course. Each pick-up or drop-off point will open on designated days and schedules will be announced for the guidance of the students. The VPA, Sir Chito, will formulate the guidelines for partnerships for the drop-off points. So I hope that answered the question of the pantograph. Thank you, Dr. Nora. Um, that's it for the questions, for the question and answer portion of this webinar. I would like to thank everyone who, who participated by raising questions through the registration form and the chat box of this webinar. Thank you as well to the speakers for answering the questions and enlightening us further in terms of the concerns and the things that we might not have understood during the presentation. Truly, if there's a one takeaway from this entire episode, is that we have to bloom where we are planted. And we are assured that UNC is here to make sure that we are cultivated and nurtured the way that we deserve to be. In UNC, it's not just for the school, it is also preparation for life. In the University of Nueva Cáceres, we build a better tomorrow for our students. With our future-ready facilities, progressive teaching methods, a nurturing culture for success, our Learn As You Earn programs make it easier for working students to finish college. We ensure their bright careers. It all starts here, in the heart of Bicol. The University of Nueva Cáceres by Ayala's AC Education. Nurturing better tomorrows for all. UNCN's mga kaibigan, lubos po tayong pinagpala ngayong hapong ito. Sa ngalan po ng lahat ng ating mga speakers at ng bumubuo ng ating webinar series at syempre po ng buong University of Nueva Cáceres, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagsubaybay. Ito po ang webinar series episode 1, Tapang, Talino at Tulong. The learning continues at UNC. Ang tabayanan po ninyo ang mga susunod na episode nitong first ever academic initiated webinar series sa buong kabikulan. Kami po ang inyong mga UNC ambassadors sumasaludo sa pagpupunyagi ng mga Bicolano. University of Nueva Cáceres, dumadamay, umaalalay. At UNC, everybody makes it. God bless everyone.